Hey and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at creating a smart home dashboard, kind of like the one you see here. A dashboard can be really useful for uh, at a glance just getting a sense of states and statuses of your smart home devices and sensors. And it can also be really useful for when you're creating automations or troubleshooting other automations to see kind of what your house was doing at a certain point in time and what normal activity looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split this into two different videos. The first video is going to be all about getting the data out of Node-RED and Home Assistant and putting it into a spot where we can visualize it on a dashboard like this. The second part is going to be leveraging uh, tools like Grafana to pull that data out and display it in a way that makes sense and is easily interp uh, easy to interpret. So anyway, without any more delays, let's get started on that. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and create a session to our automation server. So if you've been following this video series so far, uh, I think it was in video one or two, we actually installed Influx Database as one of the packages uh, when we first put Node-RED and Home Assistant on the machine. And up until now we haven't used that yet. If you haven't been following the video series, then chances are you, you don't have this installed, and so now would be a good time to, you know, pause this video and go find the install instructions to put the InfluxDB software onto your automation server, whether it's Windows or, or Linux or Mac. Uh, I believe there is pretty pretty good instructions on the Influx website uh, for any of those OSs. So now let's go have a look and see what Influx is all about. Now, by typing the influx command, you enter a client shell uh, to the influx DB server that's running on this host. If you've ever used a database server before, like MySQL or Postgres or anything like that, you'll be used to seeing a shell like this, uh, a command line interface that allows you to query the database for data, manipulate the database uh, data structures, and create and remove users and tables and database objects. That's all pretty standard stuff. It, if you're not too familiar with databases, it's not a huge deal. I'm going to go through some of the basic commands that we need to use to get started creating the database. Um, and in terms of querying the database for data, uh, you can do it at the command line, and I'm going to do it as we go, just for an example. But the software we use, um, Grafana, you don't have to be an SQL expert to create uh, nice graphs in Grafana. Um, as long as we get the data in there, uh, a lot of the heavy lifting can be done by software if you're not if you're not too uh, SQL uh, proficient. The first thing we need to do is actually create a database for our data points to go into, and you can do that with a simple create database command. But before we do, I'm going to quickly show you how to list all the databases that already exist in Influx, and that's the command show databases. So I've been using Influx for a while, so you can see I've got a, a couple databases in here, Automation, Graphite, Telegraph, Proxmox, Test. Um, chances are, if you just installed Influx, you don't have these databases in here. Um, my primary uh, database for data point collection is the Automation database, so I'm not going to create another one called Automation, but uh, I will walk through the creation database creation steps uh, just as an example here. So for you to create your primary database, it's a really simple command. It's create database, and mine's is going to be called test2, but you name yours whatever, whatever you like. And that creates the database. So if we do another show databases, you'll see uh, we now have a database in there called test2, and you'll have a database in there called whatever you called it. Um, once you've created your primary database, the way to hop into it and begin using it is to just use the command use. And in my case, I would say use test2 if I wanted to hop into the one I just made. But I'm going to say use automation because that's actually my primary automation database that I've been using. So hop into your newly created database. And now uh, we can list the tables that are, uh, that are inside this by uh, doing a show series command got tables listed here you probably don't if you have just created this database you you know clearly don't have any data sitting in there yet but now we're gonna move on to node-red and we're gonna start putting data into your database and creating these tables uh, dynamically so we're gonna hop over to our node-red instance here and as you can see you're on a very busy pane of, of, of flows 
and it's on a tab called data point collection and each one of these flows represents a data point that I'm pulling out of one of my smart home sensors or devices and putting into Influx database. It might look a little intimidating right now but it's actually uh, pretty simple the way these work. There's, there's four parts that these are made up of. There's an initiator, there's a data source, there's data manipulation or data formatting, and then there's the actual influx insert. So the influx insert is the only piece here that's coming from a node type that we haven't installed yet together. So if you go to your manage palette section and you go to install, you search for influx and it's this guy right here, node red contrib influx db. And that'll give you the influx output node that we're gonna to use to actually write to our database. And that's this guy right here. So instead of me going through uh, these here, let's let's create a new example of a piece of data that I currently don't have. Uh, if we have a look at inside of Grafana here, we can see that I've got sensor data coming from some temperature sensors in my basement, the nursery, and the, the town I live in. And we see these also graphed up here. But uh, also I've got a temperature data source in my house that we haven't been pulling data from yet, and that's my uh, Nest thermostat. It's capable of also telling me, you know, the temperature in my hallway. So let's go ahead and create a data source extraction for uh, the, the Nest thermostat. So like these ones up here, the first thing that we need is an initiator, and an initiator is the it's the trigger to start the data point collection. So some of these are MQTT input nodes and they trigger data point collection by every time a message comes in from that sensor, log it in the database. Other ones are pulled from Home Assistant and they need more of a manual initiator. And, and in this case, I have uh, a injection node with an interval that repeats every two minutes. So that guarantees that every two minutes we're going to be asking Home Assistant for a current status of, of one of the uh, of one of its pieces of hardware that it's managing and then we're going to import that into Influx. So the Nest thermostat is actually managed in uh, Home Assistant. Uh, it doesn't have an MQTT polling interval attached to it. So we're going to use one of these timestamp based or uh, one of these injection node based initiators. So I'm just going to copy this one and I'm going to put it into a new spot on the pane here. So now we have an initiator that goes off every two minutes to start a data collection. What we need to do now is we need to get a Home Assistant current state node that we can ask Home Assistant, hey, what's the current temperature being displayed by the Nest thermostat? So let's go to Home Assistant and grab the uh, entity ID of the Nest thermostat. Okay, so our state tool we will look for our nest and we'll go down. There's quite a few of these. Let's go down and see if we have any of these. Here we go. Sensor hallway thermostat nest temperature. And we can see that the data it gives off is just a, uh, a string value of the current temperature that, it, that it's reading. So let's grab this entity ID, copy it, take it to node red, and we will say we want value of that sensor, and we'll call it nest temp. Okay, so we'll hook up a debug node to that to see what we're getting out of, uh, of that. And deploy, clear the debug window, and we'll filter to just things in the current flow. And let's see what kind of data the nest temperature sensor or our home assistant is going to give us about the nest temperature sensor. Okay, that's actually really easy. Uh, just like it said in the state tool, it's just a string value. You can see that the uh, the, the value or the uh, the variable type is string, or the the data type is string. Sorry, and that the value is a quoted uh, twenty one point zero degrees. Okay, very simple to uh, very simple to take that and, and do something with. So. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to actually format this data for influx. That's going to go ahead and create the columns we need and import and put the data in the proper columns. So I've already got this kind of pre-created down here so you don't have to watch me struggle through and, and waste a bunch of time. But we'll, we'll look at what's, uh, what's coded here. So 
what we're doing is we're going to set the message.payload to a new value. It's going to be a JSON string which contains a value for locale which I'm setting to hallway and that's how we're going to identify um, identify which sensor this uh, temperature information is coming from. And then the other value we're going to use is temperature. And you see here what we're doing is we're actually going to convert this string value into a floating point number and to do that we use the parse float uh, um, JavaScript command to parse the old message.payload, which is that string value 21.0, into a floating point uh, value that we can set as the uh, in the temperature column. This won't always be necessary. You won't always have to parse the number if it is already in numerical format. The only reason we're parsing it right now is because it's in a string format. And then we return the message to the, uh, the next node. So this is now formatted for influx. We should have a look at what that looks like on the debug node. Deploy it. There we go. And clear the things. And now we and now you see we have got the same data coming through, but now it's a it's a well formatted uh, JSON object which can be pushed into influx. Influx requires you push it in as a, J, as a JSON uh, string rather than just raw values. So now let's grab uh, the influx insert node that I prepared earlier and we'll look at what it's doing. So in the influx insert, insert node we can see that it is writing to the automation database in the temperature series. So if this string is formatted properly it should it should actually go in and create those data points. So let's do that now. We'll deploy it and let's rapidly send in a couple boom, boom timestamps. There's three of them in a row. And now let's do a select and see what's in our uh, temperature series. So select all from, select all from temperature. You can see here there's quite a few values that have been being logged over the past you know week or so that I've had this set up. And here we go. Those three clicks I made on the injection node have pushed uh, these three inserts into influx. So we can see that the locale that we set, hallway, is being reflected here the temperature that we're pushing, uh, that the parsed floating point is, is in here as well. So everything seems to be working, but what is this other column here? So that's this something interesting about Influx is that it's what's called a time series database. Whenever you insert a record, if you notice in our formatting for Influx, we don't specify, uh, we don't tell the database to insert a timestamp. And that's because we really don't need to. Influx has this functionality where whenever a piece of data is inserted, there's always an accompanying timestamp. And this timestamp here might look a little funny. It's in Unix epoch time, but this can be converted into any time zone or any uh, time display format you want, uh, all depending on, on how you structure your query. So that's kind of what makes Influx a good use case for the smart home is because we're never going to be giving, uh, we're never going to be getting sensor data that is historical. Every time we get new sensor data we want it to be stamped as occurring right now and that's what allows us to make um, you know real-time graphs and then things like that. So the data is an influx now. Uh, the next step is obviously to go start creating the visualizations but um, we're gonna do that in the next video. So if you have any questions uh, hit me up in the comments if there's anything that's unclear. I know I went through this kind of quickly but um, I just wanted to kind of get around the, uh, the the basic structure of a of an influx injection and you know kind of work through an example so you can tailor it to your use case. But anyway, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you soon. Bye bye.